Now at 10, all good things must come to an end. We are trading in our beautiful sunshine for more clouds and a rising chance for showers. Your forecast coming up. Also tonight on Connecticut's news station, concerns in Hartford about rising gun violence in the capital city. We'll look at how efforts to reduce shootings are coming after a boy accidentally shot himself today. Also, tenants at one local apartment building say after voicing complaints about their living conditions, they've been served an eviction notice. We're learning more about their landlord's history. Breaking news now on Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Breaking news from New Haven tonight where we've learned of another death after a domestic related shooting earlier this week. Good evening. I'm Sarah Sanchez and I'm Ben Goldman. Police have confirmed to Fox 61 the woman critically injured in that shooting early Sunday morning has died from her injuries. Police and family have identified that woman as Sheila Harris. Police responded to a home on Shelton Avenue early Sunday and found a man and woman both suffering from gunshot wounds. Officials say the man, Christopher Garvin, shot Harris. Then a family member of Harris shot Garvin in her defense. Garvin was identified as the father of Harris's children. Police say she had reported a fight with Garvin and officers were at the home just hours before the shooting took place. A vigil for Harris is expected to be held tomorrow night. Meanwhile, new at 10, gun violence is on the rise in the capital city. Yeah, and that has Hartford leaders determined to put an end to the surge in gun violence. Fox 61's Jake Garcia is live from Hartford Police Headquarters with more on what's being done now. Jake. Well, Ben and Sarah, there have been 28 homicides so far in the city of Hartford this year, surpassing the total number of homicides over the last two years, now leaving city leaders trying to put an end to the surge in violence. We had a, a shooting down on Ledger Street that Monday night that was connected to a shooting um, Tuesday into Wednesday at Park in Putnam that was connected to a shooting later that night, later that Tuesday into Wednesday in Newington, Connecticut. Gun violence on the rise in and around the capital city has police working to find those who are responsible. Since July 1st, there have been 11 homicides in Hartford and police say they are making progress on those investigations. Mm -hmm. Of the 11 homicides, only three uh, are left with unknown suspects. As police continue to investigate the remaining unsolved homicides, community members are trying to take efforts into their own hands. Connecticut's news station recently reported on a community-led effort in support of armed citizens wanting to patrol the streets of Hartford to quell gun violence, but some say adding more guns to the equation is not the answer. And there are solutions, but those solutions aren't um, one of those solutions is not to increase uh, vigilanteism or to add more guns to the mix. That's just that is just a powder keg waiting to explode. Hartford Police Chief Jason Thody says officers are planning to increase presence in neighborhoods that have been seeing an increase in gun violence. You know, we're going to go out there, get into the community, um, you know, and just try to do something different, be more visible. Uh, maybe somebody will come out and talk to us. We'll have detectives walking with us. In case somebody has information, we're going to try to do these walks in areas where there's been recent shootings, recent violence. Connecticut Against Gun Violence says supporting communities that are experiencing violence is the best way to address the issue. Investing in our communities is going to be the greatest chance of success of reducing gun violence, not adding more guns to the situation. Now, the Hartford City Council is looking at ways to strengthen the city code to help reduce gun violence here in the city. But to exactly what those details will look like is yet to be seen. It's important to note, though, that there are state laws going into effect on October 1st, one mandating uh, safe storage of guns throughout the state of Connecticut, the other banning open carry. Live in Hartford, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, Jake. A six-year-old boy is recovering tonight after accidentally shooting himself in the hand. This happened in Hartford. Police say it happened on Martin Street just after one this afternoon. The child was playing outside when he found a gun, picked it up, took it inside his home, and then shot himself. Three other children were also in that home. Moving on tonight, let's get to the weather watch here. Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us with the first check of the forecast. And Rachel, as we're saying, all this beautiful weather is coming to an end. It had to at some point. It had to at some point, but I wish we had three or four more days just like this before yeah. it happened. 
clouds rolling in as we head through the day tomorrow and a rising chance for showers, although the wettest time period over the next few days will be centered around Friday morning when once again we could be dealing with a so a super soaker rather for the Friday morning commute 65 degrees in Hartford right now. We're close to 70 in New Haven and it is really comfortable again out there through the evening tonight. I think I grabbed the wrong clicker. Maybe this is the traffic one, but as we head through the evening, once again, we'll see temperatures that'll be dropping back into the 50s to right around 60 degrees as we head towards daybreak. This one works. Here's a look at overnight lows and as we head through the day tomorrow, we'll start the day off with some early morning sun. Then we'll see increasing clouds pretty quickly. Highs only in the low 70s. There is a chance for a shower in spots in the afternoon, especially in the western half of the state. If you live east of the Connecticut River or I-91, chances are you likely stay dry until tomorrow evening when showers will become more numerous. We'll talk about that heavy rain on the way for Friday morning. Your full forecast coming up. All right, Rachel, thank you. Tonight, Meriden police are investigating a crash on Crown Street. Shocking video shows somebody getting hit by a car while on a scooter. <sighs> Whoever was behind the wheel of the sedan just drives on off. One witness even chases after the car. There's no update on the condition of the victim on the scooter. We'll update you as soon as we learn more. Yeah, the video is hard to watch. An ongoing battle between a group of tenants and a landlord in New Haven continues after several tenants came home to a sudden eviction notice on Saturday. The landlord himself, though, has been cited for several violations by the city. Fox 61's Carmen Chow is in New Haven with more. I'm in front of the Elizabeth Apartments on Blake Street, where this is one of the 1300 apartments owned by Ocean Management here in New Haven. And this just so happens to be one of the many apartments where some of those tenants were served their eviction notices. It's an abuse of power. It's a it's an imbalance of power between tenants and landlords in this state. On Saturday, tenants from various apartments in New Haven owned by Ocean Management came home to this eviction notice on their door. It states the tenant must leave on or before September 1st, and if they do not, eviction proceedings will continue. It does not, however, state a reason for the eviction. Jessica Stamp was one of the 15 tenants who received it fear to anger to helplessness to hopelessness. It was a day of roller coaster feelings. Stamp later met with the landlord Schmiel Eisenberg as well as the property manager to come to a solution. However, no resolution was ever reached. While other tenants did not get served an eviction notice, they were told their rent would skyrocket. Rent eats up half of our paychecks where mice bite our children where repairs are never made while the rent goes up and up and up. This comes after Eisenberg has appeared in court numerous times for code violations owing the city thousands of dollars. These pictures provided to us by a tenant are just some of the examples of the current conditions at their apartment. Fox 61 reached out to Ocean Management and in a statement they said in part, quote, we met in good faith three times with the representatives in an attempt to accommodate and even pressed our intention to make exceptions in some cases with specific financial needs. Mayor Justin Elker urging Ocean Management to change their minds, supporting the petition tenants posted on the door. It's a lot easier to just sit down, negotiate this thing out, pull back the evictions, and do what's right. Today we want to see Ocean do what's right. The union is hoping Ocean Management will respond to their petition by meeting tomorrow morning again at the table. But if they don't respond, the union plans on taking this to a legal level and through public pressure. Reporting in New Haven, Carmen Chow, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Well, tonight, investigators are trying to figure out what caused a fire at a home in Bristol. Take a look at this scene on Judson Street. Officials say the family inside got out just in time. They say one person was taken to the hospital. Their conditions unknown as of tonight. The call came in around 1 o'clock this afternoon. They say the residents of the home tried to put the fire out themselves. Firefighters say the house is now uninhabitable and the Red Cross is helping out the victims. New at 10 here tonight, a Miami-based cannabis company has its eyes on a property in Bloomfield for its next business venture. Yeah, tomorrow, town leaders and community members will hear from Air Wellness on why they want to bring their business to town. Fox 61's DeAndrea Turner joins us live from Bloomfield with reaction from neighbors about the potential new business. DeAndrea. 
Well, this business, they want to buy a property that's right on the Bloomfield Hartford town line. And I spoke with some residents here in Bloomfield today, and they have a lot of mixed reactions. AYR Wellness is a Florida based cultivation dispensary that has roots in six states, wanting to make Connecticut the seventh. Looking to build a cannabis growing center on the property at the corner of Toby Road in Bloomfield. Residents feeling mixed on this possibility. It's a mixed bag, you know, if there's opportunities to add jobs, you know, and make sure that everything's on the up and up. If the community directly um, profits and benefits from it, you know, it should be something that should be explored. I really don't think we need a facility like that here in town. This is a small town, so um, I'm not sure how that would affect us all. The company will detail its proposal on Thursday at a town plan and zoning commission hearing. Town residents can log on via Zoom to hear the proposal and give their opinions. AYR Wellness says the cannabis cultivation facility will bring 75 new jobs to the area. If the company gets the go ahead, it would be the second cannabis cultivation center to be built in the town. Back in January, the town of Bloomfield gave Fine Federal the green light to build a cultivation center with no public opposition. You know, jobs are hard to come by, good paying jobs. And anything that will kind of revive uh, some of the industry um, and infrastructure that we have in Bloomfield, I think, should be, again, explored as something that should be seriously, seriously considered. We all need jobs, but at the same time, we need quality jobs. Now, this company also says that they will be this will be a growing center only and we did reach out to town leaders and we're waiting to hear back again. If you have an opinion on this, you can join the zoom meeting tomorrow at 7 p.m. In Bloomfield, DeAndrea Turner, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.